Welcome back to Subject to Cross. I'm your host, Caroline Donato. And I am your co-host, Pete Kratza. And today, we are talking about weed. Cool. Marijuana and DUI law. Um, we thought it was important to talk about this subject because we come across this issue so much in our practices. We represent a lot of clients who are charged with driving under the influence, and there are many ways to be accused of driving under the influence. Do you want to describe those ways first, Pete, before we dive into it with marijuana? I didn't realize this was going to be a quiz, but I'll do my best, and you will correct me, I am certain. There are multiple uh, hooks that the Commonwealth can hang their hat on to try to convict somebody of driving under the influence. There, you can be driving under the influence of alcohol, obviously, to a degree which renders you incapable of safe driving, or with a and or with a certain blood alcohol content. So the first four or five subsections of the DUI statute deal with uh, one. Let's say you refuse to give breath or blood, then you're not completely off the hook because the Commonwealth can attempt to prove driving under the influence based upon an officer's opinion that you were impaired to a degree that rendered you incapable of safe driving. That would be based on either the police officer's observation of your driving, um, your, his, his or her observations of you know, the way that you, for instance, produced your license and registration or got out of your car, um, you know, people always seem to stumble, at least according to the police, when they get out of the car, uh, and field sobriety tests. So that's one uh, area in which they can prove driving under the influence. Another area that they can prove driving under the influence is if you are impaired by drugs or drive with, quote, any amount, end quote, of drugs in your system. That includes marijuana currently. Right. Yeah, that's a that's a nice broad overview. Great, thanks. I'm doing all right. Yeah, you're doing all really right, well. Good. So, so you have a DUI law that criminalizes driving with alcohol. Um, there's per se you have you know between 0.08 to 0.1. That's a first year DUI. It doesn't matter if you think you're impaired or you're incapable of safely driving. If that's what's actually in your blood, and the officer had probable cause to believe you're impaired to justify your arrest, you're going to get arrested. And the tiers develop from there. Higher amounts of alcohol, then you have higher tiers. But where it's relevant to marijuana is any amount of a Schedule One controlled substance under the DUI law is a highest tier D, uh, DUI offense. And marijuana is a Schedule One controlled substance. That creates quite a host of issues. And especially since Pennsylvania enacted the Medical Marijuana Act in 2016, the issues surrounding marijuana and its entanglement with DUI law have become much greater. So originally, um, this issue was, was raised as an overbroad statute. Let me back up. Let me give a scenario just to paint the picture for everybody. Say I travel to Vermont and I lawfully smoke marijuana in Vermont because in Vermont, recreational use of marijuana is legal. Medical marijuana use is legal. And a day later, I fly home and I get in my car and I'm driving home and the police stop me. Say I have a taillight out and the police say that they see other signs of impairment. They put me through standardized field sobriety tests. Whether or not there are actual signs of impairment are for a different issue under for filing suppression and then ultimately they arrest me ask me for my blood they find some marijuana in my blood from the other day when I lawfully smoked it in Vermont I'm still DUI under the law in Pennsylvania even though I'm not actually impaired and that is part of the problem with the subsection of DUI that addresses marijuana but it's an even more obvious problem if I'm a medical marijuana user in Pennsylvania if I'm a medical marijuana user in Pennsylvania, I'm, and I use it frequently, consistent with my prescription, I'm always going to have marijuana in my blood, active or inactive metabolite, and it may not translate to impairment. But the way the law is written right now, medical marijuana still is, for purposes of DUI law, a Schedule One controlled substance. Which makes no sense. It makes no sense, and 
you know, from a criminal defense perspective, when we see laws and they don't make sense or they don't seem fair, we try to find the legal angle to attach to that feeling. You know, what, why is this unfair? Um, what doesn't make sense about this? Well, what doesn't make sense about it is it's overbroad. Why is it overbroad? Because it can criminalize otherwise legally protected activity. So if you're DUI in Pennsylvania for lawful use of medical marijuana and you're not impaired, that's criminalizing otherwise legal, legally protected activity under the Medical Marijuana Act. And the Medical Marijuana Act contradicts DUI law or doesn't work in tandem with DUI law. Or if you smoked in Vermont or you smoked in Delaware or you smoked in New York or you smoked in New Jersey, wherever recreational marijuana is legal, and then you come to Pennsylvania and you're driving your car and they search your blood, you're DUI anyway too. And that was legally protected activity in a different state. And that probably triggers other constitutional um, concerns in addition to overbreadth. Right, like equal protection. Yeah, yeah. There you go. See, I didn't, I didn't pay attention all that much in law school, but <laughs> I just intuitively knew that there were other issues. Well, and that's that's part of the point to the listeners. We're lawyers, but it's an in, intuition. Well, what's not fair here? What doesn't seem right here? And what what constitutional provision and protection can we attach to that to ask a court to also find that law unfair? So where are we now? Um, I have actually litigated this before. I have challenged the constitutionality of this section of DUI law in the Court of Common Pleas in Chester County. And originally, when I first raised the issue... And specifically talking about driving with, quote, any amount, end quote, of, in this case, marijuana metabolites in your blood, correct? And marijuana. Okay, and marijuana, active marijuana. Active marijuana. Um, but, the, but the issue is, is the person impaired or not? You know, marijuana doesn't have the tiered system like alcohol does. There's tiers of alcohol that, that the legislature assigns t- to a person driving irrespective of impairment. What I mean by that, you could be showing, you know, you, sh- you could not be impaired beyond a reasonable doubt, but you have 0.08 to 0.1 um, percent blood alcohol content in you know in your blood once drawn you could have 0.1 to 0.159 and be a middle tier it doesn't matter if you're impaired beyond a reasonable doubt but that tiered system doesn't apply to marijuana as the legislature's written but originally how this presented itself the first time i i argued it was a medical marijuana patient who used medical marijuana lawfully earlier that day who was arrested, showed no signs of impairment, and at the time, there was controlling case law that said medical marijuana was not a Schedule I controlled substance anymore after its enactment, and that was Commonwealth v. Jezzy, J-E-Z-Z-I. Now, Jezzy wasn't about DUI law. It was about possession, but um, and translated to DUI law because it was characterizing what constitutes a Schedule One controlled substance. And when I litigated that case, then two Superior Court cases came down, Stone, Commonwealth v. Stone, and Commonwealth v. Dabney. And they specifically said medical marijuana is still a Schedule One controlled substance for purposes of DUI, which really put my motion at the time in a tailspin. So then I asked the court to render DUI law related to the per se prohibition against um, driving with any amount of a Schedule One controlled substance in your blood unconstitutional. And the court said, no, I'm not willing to do that. And that was about a year ago. And since then, there's been quite a few bills going through the state legislature about adopting or enacting a revised DUI law. And that revised DUI law would allow a medical marijuana driver to use their medical marijuana, lawfully drive on the street, so that they're, but so long as they're not impaired. So really impairment's the issue. You know, Pete and I aren't sitting here and saying, you can get in your car and you can drive it with marijuana and be impaired. No, impairment's the issue. There's a, a reason to protect the roadways from impaired drivers. But sometimes it goes too broad if it's not an impaired driver. 
and it's marijuana use that's lawful. And the Senate bill number 363, which you have in front of me, which I have not read line for line, um, attempts to address that discrepancy, correct? It does. It does. And what I was sharing with Pete before we started this episode was even if Senate Bill 363 is enacted, that doesn't solve all the problems anymore. I mean, that's kind of catching up with the problem that started from 2016 with the enactment of the Medical Marijuana Act. Okay, so you can lawfully drive with medical marijuana in your system so long as you're not impaired. But now we have a bigger issue. Recreational use of marijuana is legalized in just about all the surrounding states of Pennsylvania. So that's also legally protected activity somewhere else. And you have someone who legally uses marijuana recreationally in Delaware or any other state where it's lawful and then drives in Pennsylvania, they're DUI under the law again. We have the same problem. So I think it needs to be addressed broader than that. Um, The fight is lobbying through the state legislature. The fight is defense lawyers making the argument. And that's where we are. And people, when they get pulled over, time and time again, we see our clients get asked, when was the last time you smoked? Earlier today. You better believe you're going to end up in handcuffs. <laughs> you, it doesn't matter whether or not you think you passed your fields. You say you smoked earlier today or within some realm of uh, within the last 24 hours even, you're going to end up arrested. And here's some practical advice, uh, not advocating at the moment anyway because recreational marijuana isn't legal in Pennsylvania. So we're not advocating that you, you know, smoke pot and then drive because it's still illegal. But to the extent, recreational pot, to the extent that you are pulled over and you are asked when the last time you were smoked, you don't have to answer the question. We could never advocate and never would advocate that a client lie to the police, although everybody says they had two beers. and the police know that. Just a glass of wine. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but the issue is don't give them any more uh, ammunition than they need. Frankly, in our experience, whether you admit to smoking marijuana or not, if they, th- if they think you have dilated pupils, red bloodshot eyes, you're lethargic, you know, all the buzzwords, um, and they smell marijuana, for instance, you're likely to get arrested anyway. But we may have a suppression issue to the extent that you haven't admitted to smoking marijuana. Um, it's three o'clock in the morning. You know, everybody's eyes are bloodshot at three in the morning. You've been driving all night. Uh, the point is that you do preserve arguments for your lawyers to make um, without spilling the beans to the police officer at the time that you're pulled over. Now, you know, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. I think that people. Um, are caught off guard. Everybody's nervous when they see the lights light up behind them. Um, but if you remember anything, it's you don't have to incriminate yourself. Um, you don't you don't lie, but you don't have to answer questions either. Um, and what the other thing that strikes me, the fix here from my where I sit seems to be pretty simple. Um, the legislative fix. Uh, marijuana shouldn't be a schedule one substance anymore because it has uh, prescribed um, uses. It should be treated like other prescription drugs. There is a a mechanism within the DUI statute. If you're taking, for instance, you know, um, cold medicine, if you're taking um, or prescription medicine and you are impaired, you know, you see that uh, notation on the bottle, you know, the prescription bottle may cause uh, impairment, may cause uh, dizziness. Don't drive a vehicle Don't while drive on this a vehicle prescription. While on this prescription, and and or you're abusing prescription medication, they can still convict you of DUI. It sh- D, uh, marijuana should be treated the exact same way. They need to remove the language of quote any amount end quote of marijuana. Now, once and if Pennsylvania ever legalizes recreational marijuana, um, then yeah, I could see Pennsylvania coming around to the you have to show impairment. I don't know in the meantime that um, any court is going to um, find in your favor if you're smoking recreationally in Vermont 
and driving later in Pennsylvania, and the police officer has probable cause to suspect her driving under the influence of marijuana. Um, I, don't, I, I think that the fix is going to have to be um, legalizing recreational use in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Is there? Do you have any idea wh where they are with that in uh, Pennsylvania? Well, so in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania, a lot of cities have decriminalized it. Um, and that also translates to the overbreath problem, uh, the overbroadness of this statute. But I don't think the state legislature is anywhere close, just by virtue of how many times legalizing medical marijuana and untangling it from DUI law, except for the impairment aspect. They keep putting that out there and nothing is happening. I do think we need to keep pushing it in the courts when we have really strong good faith issues because sometimes the legislature doesn't act and the courts force it sometimes <laughs> um the other the other practice or the the other practical pointer for those who indulge it, i can't tell you how many times and i think we've mentioned this before i'll have a, a client with a medical marijuana card but they're smoking their non-medical marijuana and they're keeping it in an area of the car that the police find and or the driver produces well, it doesn't matter if you have a medical marijuana card if you're smoking, you know, marijuana that's in a, a glassine baggie with a, a one hitter. Um, keep your marijuana in the trunk. No, stop putting your marijuana in the car. <laughs> or keep it in the trunk. Keep it in your house. <laughs> the marijuana in your car is a smell. Smoking it in your car is a smell. That leads to reasonable suspicion of DUI. That leads to standardized field sobriety tests. That leads to an A ride which is another version of standardized field sobriety tests to detect for drug use, that leads to your arrest. Get the marijuana out of your car. Don't drive impaired, and you don't have to answer the question about when the last time you smoked was. The other point I want to raise is we keep using the word suppression, and I just want to remind everybody what that means. Suppression is when the police take... Uh, obtain evidence, evidence in the form of questioning, investigation, um, drugs, but they do it in an illegal way. Or an arrest. Or an arrest. And they do it in an illegal way. When, when that happens, and we believe that's happening, we file a motion to suppress. But anyway, if you took, if, if all this was confusing, just know the law hasn't caught up with medical marijuana. The law hasn't caught up with recreational marijuana in the decriminalized within different boroughs of Pennsylvania or decriminalized in the surrounding states. You don't have to admit to using marijuana and don't drive with it in your car. Don't smoke it in your car and don't drive impaired and you'll be okay. Or just stay in Vermont. Or just stay in Vermont. Anything else on this one, Pete? No. All right. That's it for Subject to Cross. Uh, send us your questions by email, subject to cross at com. Bye. Bye-bye. Signing off. <laughs>